Now, on Thursdays, we love to talk about art because of the amazing art pieces that usually come on display on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, speaking of displaying, we're having someone who not only displays art, but is an art curator. Moni Aishida is with us today. Now, she combines her interests in psychology, digital technology, and art. She's created this amazing outlet for expressing herself by curating amazing pieces from around the world. There's an exhibition going on, and she's here to tell us all about it. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right, so what does it take to be a curator of art in Africa or in Nigeria? I feel like it's different in this part of the world than other places. Um, so it's, I mean, first of all, it takes basically a love of art. Okay. And then obviously there's a lot of research and reading and knowledge okay. that goes into it. Um, but me specifically, I'm a curator, I dabble. I'm okay. not like, you know, that's not like my main calling, but there are people who actually go to school to study curating. Mm. Um, there are courses you can take in art schools yeah. or in universities where curating is, you know, the, the core, the primary message, the core, what you're studying, your, store, your core studies. Okay. Um, so, but to be a curator, basically you need love for the art, yeah. you need to understand what it takes to be an artist, what it takes to put on a, an exhibition, yeah. and you need to know all the stakeholders in the industry, from the artists, you know, okay. to the collectors, mm -hmm. and everyone in between. So, you know, it's not something we talk about all the time. Collectors, um, stakeholders in an industry. It doesn't feel as ABC as maybe manufacturing or the beauty industry, for instance. Uh, but these images on display right now, these pieces on display, have been put together because they fit together. How do you uh, get pieces like this to all come together in a gallery like yours? Um, like I said, it's all about knowledge, one, and research. Okay. Um, so typically you have a story or a theme in mind, or you have some artists, they've been pulling their works, and you think you can put together a cohesive show that has a narrative that can involve and touch on all the artists and the works that you have in mind. Okay. And then you just put it together. It's, it's almost, it's in, its, in itself, it's a form of art as well. Okay. Um, and you just need to put the pieces together to make it make sense. And once there's a narrative, yeah. it's about making sure other people can tap into that narrative and understand and relate to it as well. So let's talk about the narrative for the exhibition that's going on right now. Uh, I know that it's tagged, is it I Am Woman? Or? I Am and Nothing Else. I Am and Nothing Else, fantastic. All right, so uh, in terms of your theme, tell us about it. Okay, so the I Am and Nothing Else exhibition at Affinity Art Gallery in VI is an exhibition in honor of International Women's Month. It opened in March. Okay. And um, it showcases the works of five really visionary um, female artists, three from Nigeria and two from South Africa. Okay. And it's just sticking to the themes of women being enough, African women, as you are. You don't need any additions or subtractions, which is what I am and nothing else. No more, no less. You take me as I am and nothing else. So it's just these artists exploring this theme from their own perspectives because they have different mediums and obviously they have different stories and different backgrounds. Okay. So they all interpret this, the, the subject from different perspectives. A lot of people tend to think that the story of a woman is the same across board. Right. Um, you know, they grow up uh, playing with dolls. Uh, they, you know, go to school, eventually get married and have babies and that's it. Um, so in this particular exhibition, are you sharing more than that story? Definitely. In fact, this exhibition, we are pushing it from the celebratory um, position. We are basically saying African women deserve rest, they deserve peace, they deserve the soft life. Um, a lot of the artists are, we're trying to change the narrative of, you know, the struggle with the woman with the load on her head and the baby at her back, yeah. which is what a lot of African arts depicting yeah. African women was for so many years. Exactly. So now we're showing women at rest. We're showing women, yeah. you know, enjoying themselves at peace with their inner selves, confronting their demons. Because that's also a part of um, reaching self-awareness and reaching peace. Yeah. Not letting those demons disturb you. You have to confront them and conquer them. So artists like Rowana Tella is doing that with her work. Artists like um, um, Tomlola Olomide is confronting um, misogyny 
mm. head front and confronting society. Okay. And so different perspectives from the different artists um, is what you find in the exhibition. So I like the fact that it's female artists yes. uh, as opposed to just artists who have put together pieces that are of women. Right. Because there has always been this over-sexualized imagery of women. The average painter or artist you see across the side of the road has some busty, hippie, black, very black woman with huge afros right. um, in their imagery. Now, not to say that this isn't sort of, uh, well, close to what uh, the average African woman is, but you're, you're, you, you ladies have gone a step further. But then are they connecting with the audience who have been able to see these images and how are they doing that? Um, definitely. So it's, it's, in fact, a lot of the people who have come to the exhibition are, have spoken about the novelty of seeing women depicted, I mean, women depicted by other women. Because traditionally, like you mentioned, a lot of times it's men who have been drawing women's figures. Yeah. And so um, we had like a, an, an elderly, very knowledgeable collector, was, she was very into the idea. And it's not just at our exhibition, it's happening more and more um, often. A lot of women now are depicting either themselves self-portraits in their works yeah. or depicting women's bodies and you know, anatomy in, in art. And it's a different feel, it's a different vibe than when, than when a man paints a woman. And the audience has connected with it, and it shows throughout the exhibition as well. I could see some of the images that just showed on the screen now of plus-sized ladies, and not exactly over, you know, over enhanced in certain areas. And I'm, I'm putting my hands up here for a reason, <laughs> but it's breakfast TV, you know. Um, and it's it's a delicate space to go into, you know. Now the exhibition is wrapping up very soon. Um, what is it that you hope this exhibition finally? says to the audience? Um, I hope it says that women, like I said earlier on, are allowed peace and they're allowed a space to just be themselves without societal expectations. Okay. They're allowed to be accepted in their completeness as who they present. Like, this is me. I don't want society to add anything to me. I don't want you to subtract anything from me. And you need to take me as I am, which is what the title is. I am and nothing else. Just me, and I'm enough that way. I have to appreciate you for coming to talk to us about this exhibition. Thank you so much for having and me. And I honestly am really intrigued uh, to find out uh, and to see more of these pictures or images uh, myself. Thank you so much. Moni and Aishida here uh, with us on our art segment today. Wake Up Nigeria continues after this quick break. Stay with us.